Hello everyone. In this series, we are going to discuss how we can use the measurement effect to actively influence the passage of time. What if measuring time more precisely and with higher resolution could actually change the flow of time itself? This isn't science fiction. It's a testable hypothesis using nothing more than two computers and some clever programming. Abdullah Amrad or Ali Sambob each have a clock program running on their computers. Both clocks tick 1000 times per second and they can see each other's clock data over the internet. First, they run both clocks for 10 minutes to make sure they're synchronized. Abdullah counts Brad's ticks and similarly, Brad counts Abdullah's ticks. Everything matches up perfectly. Then Abdullah increases his clock's speed to 10,000 ticks per second. Now he measures Brad's clock for 10 minutes and calculates the ratio. Abdullah's own ticks divided by the ticks he records on Brad's clocks. Before increasing the resolution, this ratio was exactly one. But now, is it something else? Abdullah decides that he wants to keep going. He increases his clock to 100,000 ticks per second, then 1 million, then 10 million. Each of those ticks he measures against Brad's 1000 tick clock for exactly 10 minutes and records the ratio. Or in other words, he measures the speed. At the same time, Brad is watching Abdullah's clock from his end. As Abdullah's clock gets faster and faster, what does Brad see? Does Abdullah's clock appear to speed up from Brad's perspective? Here's where things get philosophically tricky. You just cannot observe deviations in your own local clock because it serves as your personal reference for time. Think about it. The statement, my clock is wrong, is physically meaningless without an external reference. What I mean is that error, by definition, can only be measured when your local clock deviates from some other standard. Error, by definition, only occurs if you somehow manage to find your local clock to deviate against some reference. There is literally no other meaningful way to measure error. So what both Abdullah and Brad need to do is they need a local reference clock. Both users have these backup reference clocks. Why? To make sure their own main clocks aren't just drifting. This ensures that any differences they observe are real and not merely experimental errors. If they aren't, then the next question we ask becomes, when Abdullah measures time more precisely and with the higher resolution, does he see Brad's clock slow down? Imagine there's a speedometer. Does Brad see Abdullah's clock speed up? If the answer is yes to both these questions, then the act of measuring time more precisely actually changes how time flows between the two systems. Two computers, two clocks, one interesting question about how measurement affects time itself. By the way, the reason why I said earlier that a local clock can't err without a reference clock is because of the rule, your own clock, always, and I mean always, ticks at a constant rate. This is one of the fundamental rules of general and special relativity. In the next episode, we will explore this physical concept in more detail and explore how we can make achieving higher and higher rates of time dilation easier. Thank you for watching and goodbye.